This video is about Vector Lab. You see, what you see is the lab report for Vector Lab. The purpose of this, this lab is to learn about the vector property and understanding, uh, understanding vectors and understanding, um, finding a resultant vector and also stationary equilibrium. Um, so first we're gonna start with the displacement vectors. When you watch these videos, you will also in a vector lab file, a folder, you will see a vector supplementary video list. And in there, it has this list of 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. <clears throat> All these videos are gonna show you uh, is, is the video that um, to find the displacement vectors. So in ground, if we have an in-person class, then you will be actually walking on in the classroom on the floor making um, marks. So let's say you walk 1.5 miles, 1.5 meter north. For starting here, you walk north. Then you make um you walk two meter to east. But so what you're gonna do is actual actually measure the displacement. Here, you see, this is going to be that initial. This is going to be final. Therefore, the displacement will be from initial to final. This is going to be displacement. length displacement length is going to be from here to here so you use your uh ruler in the video i have a measure so you're going to measure put the zero from starting and then an, um, final at the end and you measure how how much is the displacement then you're also going to measure let's see what does it say you measure the net displacement and measure angle use a protractor so for this lab you need to have a protra protractor purchased and you want to measure the angle theta here notice that this is a right triangle so net displacement here you write the net displacement what you measured the displacement, which is the one that comes in here. And then the angle is gonna be here. So that's question one. Now I want you to make a similar, um, I want you to actually draw this triangle in a space here. I want you to draw it, draw a, um, this displacement vector in here. How would you do that? You're gonna make, um, you decide the conversion of your choice. So here, let's say, you may decide on a conversion. So it could be 10 centimeter to, uh, you can, use the conversion from one meter to 10 centimeter. You can do one meter to five centimeter. You can do one meter to uh, two inches, whatever you decide, but make sure you write down state your conversion or scale. If it's a one meter to 10 centimeter, something like that. You decide whatever you, you decide, but make sure to write it. Then I want you to draw, okay. So it was, a, if it was, a, we walked 
it says we walked 1.5 meter north. So you're gonna make a, you're gonna use your ruler. You're gonna use your ruler on your paper, okay? That says from zero to 15 centimeter. Zero to 15 centimeter. Or that's too much, then zero to seven centimeter. So seven centimeter is the 1.5 or something. 7.5 centimeter. So you decide on the scale and then you use your ruler, use your ruler to draw a triangle. So 10, uh, one meter to the north and 1.5 meter to north. And then what was it? Two meter to east. But this has to be measured. Then, Draw your displacement on your paper here. That's number two. And also don't forget to explain. Don't forget to explain. Can you explain why this is the case? Uh, is the length and direction of vector your net displaced on the paper consistent on the one on the floor to the video? Can you explain why? Make sure and explain this. So that's number two. Number three, notice that um, this triangle that you drew and the one on the ground or the video you watch is a right triangle. Only for the right triangle, you can use Pythagore Pythagorean theorem. What Pythagorean theorem says, is that when you have a right triangle like this, let's say length A, length B, length C. Length C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Or the length C is equals square root A squared plus B squared. So use this Pythagorean theorem in the length um, that you want to calculate the displacement that you saw on the video and displacement you saw on the paper. So let's do the one. So here you have measured. This is the one that you actually did. So it's the question one. This is gonna be the displacement from the question one, your answer in question one, your answer in two. So this is actually what you measured. Measured. Then use Pythagorean to calculate. The calculated displacement, that's equals to, for the case of a floor, which is the video, this is the video one. That's equals to, what is it, 1.5 meter we walked? 1.5 meter and two meter, right? So the A is gonna be 1.5 meter and B is gonna be two meter. So 1.5 meter square plus two meter square square root. Uh -oh. For the paper, um, whatever the conversion you decided, you're gonna put your A square plus B square, your value. And compare these two. Answer, after you write these values, write it clearly in the comments, you're gonna answer, how does this compare with which you measured both on the floor and on a sheet of paper?
you're going to compare these two values for the paper, paper, floor, and floor, which is the video in video. So that's number three. Number four is discussing um, angle. The tangent of angle is defined the ratio between the size opposite and adjacent to the angle. So just, just making sure though, here, this is the triangle. The one that you measured, this is the one that you measured. So make sure you use the correct A and correct B. All right. This is going to be this value here, theta. This is going to be 90 degree minus theta measured. Okay, so for the calculated tangent, you simply use the calculator. You can even Google it. Um, you can put tangent of, I say, 90 degree minus theta measured. This is from one, same thing, tangent. 90 degree minus theta measured. And this is from two. And um, measured tangent, you're going to do uh, A is going to be 1.5 meter divided by two meter. And then this is going to be your A and B. And then again, compare and compare. So this is the calculated value, but measured is here, theta. So discuss your result and explain why. That's number four. One, you're gonna watch these all these four four videos and um, measure the displacement magnitude the length, and also measure the angle. Make a comment. And then in two, you're gonna, measure, you're gonna make your own triangle in this paper. You decide on your conversion scale, state it, and draw the right triangle. Then you're gonna measure with your ruler. Both of them you're gonna use um, to write a triangle. You gotta use a, uh, your uh, scale, but you're gonna measure the displacement, you want to measure the angle with the with your protractor. Do it similar, discuss why you can do that in here, number two. Number three, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length. So you state your answer, the measured displacement in floor, which is from the video, and um, your paper, the one that you made, the triangle you drew, um, you're gonna write down the displacement and you calculate using Pythagorean theorem to compare. The Pythagorean theorem says that uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the one on the video have a 1.5 meter squared plus two meter to find the net displacement. You can do similarly, um, applying Pythagorean theorem to the triangle you drew. They compare you, then compare your answer and make a discussion. Number four, you're gonna find, you're gonna compare the angle by using tangent. Tangent is adjacent over um, 
ratio between um, opposite and adjacent to the angle. So, but it, be careful that the angle that we are talking about is not the measured angle, but it's the one that's 90 degree minus the measured angle. So use that and uh, measured tangent is gonna be uh, 1.5 meter over two meter, the one that's from the video and the paper one is gonna be your A and your B. Make sure to use the A and B correctly. And then to find the actual tangent, you use the, the red one, red angle, which is 90 degree minus your measured angle. And then you actually put the tangent. Compare the answers from um, the one in the video, the floor one, and also the one, the triangle in the paper and make a dis discussion. Number two is mostly uh, you answer the questions. And number four is going to be the one that's, um, it says that a now, cons number four, now consider a tug of war involved, involving three people. So there's going to be a three ropes. In order to have the total force to be zero, ah, do they all have to be? Not because it's showing if the back remains at rest was true. Do they all have to be equal? Am I going to So if the bag remains at rest, at rest, that means that at rest means it's at stationary. It's at the static. Equilibrium means net force equals zero. So my question here is that a, to have a net, in order to for have a net force equals zero, do all these three forces, do they have to be same magnitude? to make sure that it's um, net force, adding up all these three forces to be zero. Do they have to be the same? They are the same only when this special case. 60, 60. If they're 60 degrees apart, no, 60, 120. When they're 120 degree apart, then all these uh, forces, Magnitude has to be the same, but there could be a case like this. Imagine, I'm doing number five. Number four is net force equals zero. Number five is about this. Same. 
Let's say if you have uh, two forces, that's like this. You could still have a third force that makes the sum of all these three to be zero, even though they're not the same in magnitude. So these two forces drawn here, obviously not the same magnitude, but you can have certain third force to make all these, to make all the, uh, to make the sum of all these three forces to be zero. How do we find the sum of the two forces? You're gonna draw a parallelogram like this. So the green vector here, this is gonna be the sum of the two forces, the black forces. When you have the third vector that's equal and opposite to this green vector, then net force is zero. Let's say A, B, C. This is R, let's say. So we say R is equals to A plus B. The C vector that's equals to minus of R, then net force, which is A plus B plus C will be zero. So there are cases that you could have um, different magnitude and to have the net force of the three vectors to be the same, uh, to be zero. So you do not need to have same magnitude and you should explain this with your words. Explain with your words. So that's four and five and then do one, two, three, please. Now I want you to watch the video that's here. This is not done by me. But this is the force table video. So let's see. So this is the link to that video. What you see here, this is the force table. So you have a force table and then these uh, measures the angle. You, you see there are three ropes. And then at the end of each rope, you have a weight that's hanging. So changing the weight changes the temp, uh, tension of the each rope. So you can have the different way and to control the, to adjust the tension in the rope. And you see that the other end of the rope is connected to the ring. And this ring is at the center of a force table. And you see that at the center of the force table, there's a little pole that's sticking out. So if you put the ring, ring is at this uh, through the pole, ring is through the pole and then if the ring becomes stationary at the center, that means that all the three tension forces balance out to make it its net force equals zero. So when the when the ring is at through the pole, through the pole, not stationary, this is the ring, then all the tension force balance out, the magnitude balance out the angle matches to make the net force on the ring to be zero. 
So let's just see how, what he does. Wait, I want to make sure that you hear the voice. So hold on. So let's see, um, I'm going to play. So you only need to watch up to here, up to the 30 seconds, 30 seconds of the video. That should be enough. So again, what he was saying is that there is going to be a mass. There is a mass that's a 350 gram that's hang. At then this is the zero degree. So the string is at the zero degree. And then the second one, which is, what did he say? So 300 grams at 155, angle 155. And then there's a third one that has, what's the weight? Hold on. I want to watch it again, sorry. The third one. Two hundred forty degree. Okay, so let's go back to the note. So that was the video that we watched. This is the one. And then um, what you're going to do is to watch the video. Oh, so this is the video again. And uh, all you need to do is the first setting is fine. This first setting, the first condition is good enough. This is, sorry, up to, the first, um, let's say 30 seconds. What we saw was that there's a force table. The force table from the top, it looks something like this. Force table on the side, looks something. Hmm. Force table on the side, looks something like that. Hmm. So let's see, at the center, there's a ring, and then there's a one that's zero degree. There's another one that's like this. There's another one like that. And then over here, there, each of them has a mass that's hanging. So you see that uh, there's a one with the mass. The another one is over there. This one is over here. There's a mass that's hanging. And this was 350 gram and what did I say, 150 gram. And the other one here is 300 gram. And you see that there is a measure on the force table that shows the angle. So it goes over 360 degrees. The first one was at zero degree. First one is at zero degree, so it's zero degree. The other one is at uh, 155 degree. The other one is at 240 degree. 
I believe. You watch it again and then write it correctly. So then in the second one, I want you to find the angle between one, two, and two, three. So let's say this is one, two, three. The angle one is here. Angle two, this is angle two. Angle three, that's the angle three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So again, the angle one, that's angle one here. Angle two, that's gonna be from zero to two. This is angle two. Angle three, that's going to be zero, two, three. This is angle three for the first one. Angle one, two is going to be one, two. This is one, two. Angle two, three is going to be two, three. Angle three, one is from here to here, three, one. Something like that. And you see that um, the more mass you it's hand, then that means that it's more tension. The weight and attention force is gonna be the same. And therefore the more mass that's hanging, it's gonna be more tension force, more magnitude that's being pulled in that direction. So, let's see. Answer here in the video, what is the mention of the centering? What is the total force of the centering? So what's, what is that centering doing? Is centering moving around? Is it moving with a constant motion? Is it at rest? So if it's a constant motion, constant, uh, if it's a constant motion in straight line and if it's at rest, it's at equilibrium and in equilibrium, the net force equals zero. That means that all the forces, the net force equals zero on the ring. Ring is at stationary. It's at rest. So net force equals zero. So, um, Tension one, tension two, tension three has to be zero. But again, these tension forces or the forces is a vector. So you don't just add the magnitude, you gotta consider the angle. All right. So now you're gonna make your, again, your own conversion and draw all these three forces accurately possible. All right, accurate. That means that, let's say that one, which was the uh, largest? 350 is the largest. So you're gonna use your ruler, state your conversion. Let's say, Mm, you want to do five grams for one centimeter, something like that, for example. Then you use your ruler, measure, use your ruler, measure the length, and then you're going to state this is zero degree. Let's say this is seven centimeter. The other one is going to be what? 6.65, six centimeter, 200. So 350 
350 gram converts to seven centimeter. Uh, 300 converts to six centimeter. And then this should be angle one, two. Then angle one, three, two, one, and one, three. The other one is 150 gram, 150 gram. So that's gonna be 33 centimeter. So it's gonna be a lot shorter. Something like that, right? So you're gonna do this accurately. Um, then, so you do that for number seven. Number eight, you wanna find the total force. Number eight, you wanna find the total force. Total force acting on the ring. Use the ruler and protractor again as a force so you don't have to redraw it. Um, number eight, number nine. So number seven and number eight can be combined. So I suggest to draw it rather large. And then how to find the total force. First, I'm gonna do total force on the ring is equals to, total force on the ring is equals to T1 plus T2 plus T3. And we know this to be zero, but will that come out to be zero? So T1 plus T2. Let's please do the T1 plus T2 or T2 plus T3, two vectors, two tension forces, you decide. Please do T1 plus T2 or T2 plus T3. So I'm gonna do T1 plus T2 here. T1 plus T2 is, you're gonna use a protractor and a ruler, okay? You need to do this with the ruler and a protractor to make sure that's really parallel. So they should look something like this for the parallelogram. And the line, the vector I'm gonna draw this vector, this is T1 plus T2. Well, the ideal case so that's what I'm gonna do. That's probably good enough. Uh, if you could, no, no. And then T1 plus T2 plus now T3 is gonna look something very, very hard. You can, uh, mm, that's gonna be very, very hard. Let's see, it's like, it's like almost like this. Is T3. See, it's almost on top of each other. Just like this, maybe. And then it's going to be just like this. Right? So I have the net force to be this is. So it's pretty close to zero, very close to zero, but not because there is an error. So that's number eight. You find the total force. Then number nine, the ideal situation. 
the total force to have? Zero. Number 10, experimental findings for the total force. Uh, I don't know why I wrote that. Likely are different from the expected value. So I want you to estimate percentage error. So I want you to find the percentage error in magnitude and in angle. Magnitude and angle. Um, so, So how do you find the percentage error in magnitude? Mm, I'm gonna write it here. You can use the one in a earlier drawing, but let's see if I can cut. So here. So let me erase this. Mm, I want to erase this one too. Oops. It's going to be hard to erase. So remember, this is T1 plus T2. And uh, we say that, we say that a T3 is equals to T1 plus T2 for net force to be zero, right? Then, Then what I'm gonna draw here is minus T1 plus T3. I'm gonna draw the minus T1 plus T3, which is gonna be on the same line. Just extend the line, make sure the same length. So again, you use your ruler. You gotta use your ruler, right? So the length is gonna be the same length here and here. Ideally, the magnitude, ideally the magnitude of, let's say this length, and this length, has to be the same because T3 has to be equals to minus T1 plus T2. This is, this is minus T1 plus T2. This one. We want this to be we want this to be equals to T3, but it's not. So finding the error for this is that magnitude. So theoretical percentage magnitude is the theoretical minus measure. divided by the theoretical value times 100%. So 
you're going to have the magnitude of T1 plus T2 minus magnitude of T3. That divided by T1 plus T2, magnitude of the T1 plus T2 times 100%. That's how you find the percentage magnitude, this value. All right, next is to find the error in angle. Error in angle is pretty much, this is gonna be the error in angle. So use your protractor. Use your protractor. Protractor and measure. This one, measure this one. Ideally, equals zero degree, but you might have a little bit off, just like this case. So you find out and then make a discussion. Okay, so that's the lab for, for vector lab. Hope you understand how you do, how to do this. This, like that. For the fourth table earlier, you make a triangle. 